a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money in the next probably 12 months. They keep chasing stuff. They keep buying stuff at the high prices. Um, SMCI is a prime example. How many times have I heard people say in the last three weeks, oh, we need to get in on SMCI. This thing is going to the moon. It's going to 5,000, whatever. The, yesterday it proved it isn't going to 5,000. It sold off 17, 18% of its value in a day. It dropped over $200 a share in a day. Understanding how these markets function is your prime weapon of creating wealth. And that is what we're going to get into today as we review the calls with Mark on the swing trading call and Carrie on the platinum call. One of our tribe members, Zeke, spoke about how in the past he went about investing and it was just sort of this randomness by this company based on hype, based on this, that, and the other. And he joined our Platinum channel about two or three months ago. And he said he's just been watching, he's been reading, he's been learning on how this all works which is cool. That's what you should do, right? You should be always absorbing knowledge and all this stuff. Well, he talked about how he was down in a stock, 700 and some odd dollars. And he initially was like, just dump it, take the loss, eat it, what have you. But then he remembered, why don't I take what I'm learning in the Platinum Channel and apply it to this company and see what I can come up with. So he went to the charts and in the following, he explained what he did. In the end, he took, instead of a 700 and some odd dollar loss, he took a $50 loss. He made back because he had the knowledge and applied it from what he has learned from the Platinum Channel. So let's take a look. I've already had my, uh, my uh, uh, membership or dues for this Platinum Channel essentially paid for on one trade, which re, which was a result of my being uh, able to uh, read the charts as a beginner. I'm still on a beginner level, but I was able to read enough of the charts uh, uh, and understand the charts to know, no, no, don't sell today. I think it's going to get better in the next four or five days. And sure enough, it did. Uh, I, I still uh, lost 50 bucks, but I was behind 720 bucks when I first looked at it and decided, you know, I'm going to hang on at 720 because uh, I knew what a little bit about what the charts were telling me. So yeah, I was pretty pleased about that. I'm glad to hear that, Zeke. I'm a little frustrated today, to be honest with you, a little just wound up. Didn't sleep well last night, concerned about a lot of things. Um, you know, like everybody else in the world, uh, you probably you think about your bottom line. And it really got me to thinking about this whole chase mentality that we're seeing in the world. The chasing of this Lamborghini uh, dream uh, on a yacht and all the, like all the video content we see on Instagram and is TikTok and where we see on YouTube and the, the hype about AI and all this stuff. And don't get me wrong, AI is gonna change our lives and is changing our worlds. It totally is. I mean, you're, I'm holding a phone that's been using AI for a long time and I talked to a person or a thing called Surrey and stuff like that and that's ai it's changing our lives but what spooks me the most is the chase is the fomo it's the um smci you should have bought back in probably mid-january and you should have gotten out of it a week ago but no most people bought into it a week ago and then just got their asses handed to them that's the thing about all this. NVIDIA, same way. It's all hype. Why is this stuff going up in a vertical fashion? Number one, you should be cautious if you're seeing a vertical fashion move. What causes that? Did their earnings really just, did they 1,000% increase their earnings? Did they sell a 10 million 
more units in the last week? No, they didn't. Understanding the mechanics of this market is essential for your success in creating wealth. The biggest thing is pushing SMCI, pushing NVIDIA, pushing Meta, it's options. If you're not familiar with options or zero days to expiration options, get familiar with it. It has changed the investment landscape. It is jerking people around in all directions. And if you're not in the understanding and the know on this, well, you're losing your butt. Most likely you lost $200 of a per share yesterday on SMCI. You lost money on NVIDIA. Um, everybody's cranking up. Oh, the earnings are going to be great. This and yeah, You don't know. And if they are great, is it buy on the rumor, sell on the news? Is it a option play that some guy with a billion dollars just put on the video that's going to jerk you around? This is where you getting in and understanding why you're buying something when you buy it and why you're selling it when you sell it. Nobody else is teaching this stuff. Nobody's talking about this stuff. And that's why we're talking about it. The Russell 2000, the largest holding in the Russell 2000 is, take a guess. Apple? Nope. <laughs> it's a small, it's no. a small cap index. Come on. No, I know. Anybody? SMCI. What? NVIDIA. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a large cap company. SMCI. SMCI is the largest. It is five... Yeah, five times the size of the next largest company in the Russell 2000. Okay, it's like 50, about 50 billion market cap. So that's the next one would be $10 billion in size. Like yesterday's move in the S&P 500 was, or it was up, SMCI represented 30 26% of the uh, Russell 2000's uh, overall move. So when Russ, when, if you want to, <laughs> honestly, you want to short something, not to write, not a recommendation or advice. If you wanted to short something, the Russell 2000, when the SMCI gives way, that would be because it'll take the Russell 2000 down because it is the Russell 2000 right now. That's interesting. And you can see, here's the chart. You can see what happened today. Kind of have a little rug pull. It came down and it, it's filling this gap. We have another gap here. This is just astronomical. And I don't know much about SMCI other than their, I don't think they do anything but assemble these computers, right? Um, Carrie um, would know. Not well, Carrie. Yeah. But again, the chart for me, I'm like, okay, this is quite a chart. But for me as a swing trader and just as a technician looking at this this is not the area i want to be entering a position here for me personally this is an area i want to be entering a position down here when it when it meets the criteria of my trading plan and then you write it up and then you see what happens and here's a bunch of cells right here uh but again it can it still go up sure there's a lot of enthusiasm in this market you know and people are you know with fomo fear of missing out how high can this thing go how high i mean what is your risk reward on this? Paul, what do you think the risk reward on this is right now? I think you've swung into it a few times, haven't you? Uh, I've owned it. So um, okay. Good for I you. got plenty of reward. I mean, back a year ago. Right. So but I is this something, I mean, would you look at this chart and say, yeah, that, that's for me? Not now. I already got, I did a wash this morning. So I'm staying away. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that <laughs> in the Discord. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, uh, it's, let me go up here and. I mean, it's down 14% today. Yep. And here's the last year. Okay. That's just astronomical. And look at and look at the stock. This is that SMCI. Look at this. Yep, this is it. So let's it go. Dropped, it dropped major. Look at that red candle. Yep. That's what it dropped today. Yep, that, that's, that's today. Yeah. Okay. So if you're looking at charts, you're like, well, me as a tech, see, it's still going down. Look at it. Where are we at now? Okay. Uh, Look at, we're down 15%. Put a, put a, put a, put a, a one-minute chart on that and take a look at what's happening.
it's just selling. Yeah. Probably by day's end, it'll yeah. be around this is, seven This is today. This is today. So a lot of people got in right here and dumpster fire. And here we are. This thing, this, anything that goes up like this, NVIDIA, this SMCI, you have to go look at what is pushing this. And this is the whole... Mark and I were talking to me before we we got on the call. This is now the we're whole down, game we're almost stuff. 16, we're almost down sixteen percent now. So, yeah. you know, you, you start seeing this, and you start seeing uh, computers and logarithms starting to click in and starting to sell. And why would they want to do that? Because they just made so much money, and they're like, okay, this, um, this is like this thing is so traded in the options world, and today the the these options are expiring. There you go. Yeah, that too. Yeah. So let's just look. I mean, when we put this chart up just a second ago, we were just filling this gap right here. And now we're down 15.5%. We were what, at 11 or 12? I don't know. But yeah, so I'm looking at it and I'll watch right here. Is it going to bounce off the nine? Is it going to be res support at the nine or is it going to, who knows? We got another gap, little gap right in here, potentially. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Best of U.S. Investors is about, about buying companies and identifying companies that are going to change our world. That is Kerry's MO. That is how he looks at this. And he's right. In my opinion, he's right. He's buying, looking for companies that are going to change the world. And that's honestly what you should be looking for as a long-term investor. You look at Peter Lynch, who ran the Magellan Fund with Fidelity uh, back in the day. And he would go to a mall and sit in the mall and he would look at where people were going and what shops were they walking out of with bags. And he invested accordingly. Well, it's no different. And really, that hasn't changed at all. It's identifying what is coming down the road. And in this next segment, Kerry talks about his focus on artificial intelligence and the, as he refers to it, the pineapple or the triangle of infrastructure of AI and what this is all looking to wrap up into being. And I, I, I agree with him. I think artificial intelligence and technology uh, is it is the biggest ROI you're going to get on your money over the long term at this point, other than maybe buying a big old real estate dip uh, and capitalizing on that. But this is big and carries behind it. And I get it and I totally believe in it. And so he expresses that in this next segment. What I wanted to start with, I don't see or hear as of yet. Sharice asked me a question um, just several minutes ago on on the Discord. Every I try every day to go to Carrie's office and respond to any questions that that are all that are proposed. And Sharice asked, "Where do I find the pineapple stock?" And um, so I answered her, <clears throat> and after I answered her, I, I gave my answer some thought, and I realized we've been here before. Um, we, um, we created, or we, we didn't create, we were a part of the creation of the Internet, and the Internet, if you think about it, uh, started probably in the mid 80s. And it really didn't reach penetration until about 2010. So it took 30 years for the internet to reach penetration, to reach a, a level of saturation where a major part of the world's population had access to it. Um, and that's a long time. And those who of Silicon Valley have realized they don't want to wait that long 
on this new invention called artificial intelligence. And because right now, and this is something that you you really need to watch this um, video that I've referred to or this meeting that I've referred to, the World Government Summit. Um, it was held in Dubai this past week, and um, many of the participants, you won't be able to understand because they speak a different language, but there were three participants four that you really need to hear because they will tell you things you don't know and give you an insight of what the future is going to be and then if you can connect the dots you can figure out where we're going um jensen young was the one you have to watch and then there was a he of course is nvidia and then there was a jan Lockham. Jan Lockham. He is the head of AI uh, for um, for Facebook, for Meta. He's going to tell you some things you didn't know, but are very, very important for the future. And then there was Alex Karp. Um, he's going to show you what an angry man looks like when he isn't getting the attention he should, but he's going to give you an insight to show you that there's only two parts of the world that are, in, that are participating in AI. This, was, this shocked me. And, and, and it's basically Silicon Valley and the United Arab Emirates. Emirates. You'll notice I didn't say the United States. I said Silicon Valley and the United Arab Emirates. They're the only elements of the world who are participating in um, artificial intelligence. And that's because they're the only people who can afford it. Jensen Young will explain that to you. It cost about a billion dollars to build a data center. Those computers they put in go for $250,000 a piece. Those are the computers made by super micro computer. And you need thousands of them in your micro center, in your, in your data center. And then you got to cool it. And then you got it, you you got the whole process. So it's only available to the very rich. And that's Silicon Valley and the United Arab Emirates. Why am I losing leaving the United States out of that? Because the people in the in Washington don't have a clue. They do not know what is going on. And they can't figure it out because they're fighting over anything and everything else. Now, understand that's not the case in United Arab Emirates. They have, they have a government that when they make a decision, it's implemented tomorrow. They also have a unique problem. They're extremely wealthy. Nobody works over there. Everybody just gets a paycheck. Why is that? Because they own the oil. But wait a second, oil's going away. So they got a problem. And they woke up and said, the answer to our problem is artificial intelligence. If we can own that and sell that around the world, we're gonna stay in our strong position. And we have an advantage over Silicon Valley because they have to operate under the United States government. We don't. And they're jumping all over this. Hmm. So with that in mind, what, that, what then the other speaker 
Sam Altman showed up and explained was that he wants to raise $10 trillion to promote AI. Why does he want to do that? Back in 2015, a young man by the name of Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg realized that he had penetrated his market. He had totally covered his TAM, his total addressable market, because everybody was using Facebook. And he couldn't grow it. So what did he do? He couldn't, they wouldn't let him in China. So he went to the Indian government and he said, look, most of your nation doesn't have the internet and you can't afford to give it to them. And you, so I will build your infrastructure to give them cheap internet if you'll make sure that Facebook is on every computer you sell and every phone you sell. And that's what he did. And that's why Facebook continued to grow because he improved his TAM. Silicon Valley is sitting on a gold mine, but they only have availability of 20% of the world's population. Find me a semiconductor company anywhere in Europe, anywhere in the Middle East. They don't exist because they don't have the money to build it out. So Sam Altman said, hmm, I'll raise $10, billion, $10 trillion and I'll go over there and I'll build their infrastructure out so that we, and when, he's, when I says I'll, I call it pineapple because I, he, Sam hasn't put a name on it. It's going to consist of those companies who can profit the most by building out the rest of the world in the next three years with to ha have access to artificial intelligence. So who are those companies? I shared with you this, a white paper that I wrote that shows you on the front the infrastructure or the eco-structure of the semiconductor world. Because in order to deliver artificial intelligence, you have to have semiconductors. And you have to have semiconductors, as Jensen Young says, that get better every year, every year, that can produce and process more data faster every year. What that does, he says, if we don't make the chips better, we got to have more of them. That means we've got to get to Mars quick to build um, data centers because we'll run out of space here in the United States for them. But we aren't going to do that. We're just going to make the chips better so we can use the same data centers we have after we build them out in the rest of the world so that we can handle the demand of compute that this is going to happen. So what, what I believe is happening, and this is speculation on my part, this is Kerry connecting the dots. There are three potential manufacturers in the in the artificial intelligence world. They are ASML. You all know who they are. They're that um, Netherlands company that builds the big box that makes semiconductors. Canon, the camera company, is mounting a challenge. They say, we can do that too. So they're mounting a challenge. And then the other manufacturer is SMCI. They are the company that takes all the parts and all the pieces, packs them into a box with eight GPUs, 
and then sends them for $250,000 a piece to the data center. Those are the manufacturers. Then we have the foundries. The foundry is the company that buys the box from SML and makes the wafers that hold the semiconductors that go out. That's TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, and Intel. Then you have the people who make the chips. There are CPUs and there are GPUs. There's memory and then there's processing. That it brings in NVIDIA, Micron, Intel, ARM, AMD, and Rambus. Okay, we understand that. Then you have the architects. What is that? I just realized that's what my son-in-law does for a living. He is a architect. So I'm a software company and I'm developing a program for Keller Williams, the real estate company who has a database over the last 50 years of people they've sold homes to. They know how much, they, where they live, what they do. So I go to an architect and I say, build me a piece of software and a chip that will process all my data and then give me the information I need to promote my business. That's pretty much Qualcomm. They divide, they also design all the chips for Apple. Then you have the support units. After you make this wafer that has semiconductors on it, you have to test them to see if they work. Okay, that's AEHR. Then you have companies that say, these silicone chips get too hot and they burn up and they're creating a problem. So you have a company by the name, name of uh, Synopsys who is introducing different forms of silicone and different elements to the chips so they don't get so hot. And then you have another company by the name of Candace that I really don't understand yet, but I'm working on it. So that's your that's your pineapple, okay? This is who Sam is saying, if I can get $10 trillion, I can bring you all together and then I can build out the rest of the world with artificial intelligence. And then that will give you the ability to make more money. But we can't do it unless we create a, consort, a, a, a group that takes this forward. If we all just sit on our hands in Silicon Valley and don't work together, it will take us another 30 years to get there, just like it took 30 years to get penetration of the internet. So that's why I believe Jeff Bezos in the last month sold, I think at the first element was two, $2 billion worth of his stock. And then in my digging, I found out he entered another order to sell another 8 billion. I think he's financing, helping finance um, Sam Altman's pineapple. Okay, that's what I think is happening. Why is this happening? Greed, money. And then there's another reason. If they don't do this, we've got three wars going on right now. And we can't stop them. We can't stop them. And the reason we can't stop them is I want what you've got. And you aren't giving it to me. So I'm going to invade my neighbors. How much trade do we do with Russia? None. 
buy some vodka and some caviar and some fertilizer. How much trade do we do with Iran? None. We don't buy anything from Iran. They don't like us. Get in to understand what's happening in Israel and why, why Hamas is coming across them. I have a barber. My barber is Jewish. He actually was born in Israel. And he explained to me those Hamasians or whatever they're called are a bunch of idiots. We give them $50 for every one of them a month. Israel does. And then the rest of the world provides them all the food and shelter they want. And all they have to do is come over and work for us. Now, I didn't say this to him, but I thought, that sounds like slavery to me. That's why people attack each other. Why did, this blew my mind. We had three young soldiers, reservists, killed on a base in Yemen. In Yemen. What did we do? We killed 3,000 of their young people in retaliation. What do we expect? What do we expect? I think I expect some more airplanes flying into buildings in New York City. We've got to stop this. And the only way we're going to stop this is put a roof over these people's heads, put food on their table, and give them heating and air conditioning, and make them have a decent life. Because they watch television. They know how we live. And they want it. They want to have it. So how can we stop that? I grew up in the Catholic Church. In second grade, the nuns told me that if I was a good person and I didn't sin, when I died, I would go to heaven. And in heaven, I would live in total harmony with everybody else there. I'd have everything I wanted and everything would be there. That's what artificial intelligence is going to bring us. It's going to get bring us harmony. It's going to bring us the ability to live with each other and not kill each other. We're going down a bad, bad path. And I believe pineapple will save that. I believe there's a holy trinity. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and uh, Sam Altman. Between the three of them, we're going to save this world. If we don't, if we don't, it's over. The game's over. And all I got to do to illustrate that is to remind you what happened in Kansas City last Wednesday. We got a screwed up world. Thousands of people come together to celebrate a wonderful situation. And 15 guys kill. They didn't kill 15 people. But we got problems. And there's only one way out of this. And I believe it's the pineapple. And I believe I'm not the only one who believes that. So how do we as investors profit on this? We get on the bandwagon. We understand that ASML is going to need to build probably, I don't know how many, I think they make, they deliver about three of those big boxes that make wafers a quarter. They're going to have to make a hell of a lot more of them because they've got to build data centers all over the world. We, we, we know that computers go into those data centers. 
That's why I bought 20 shares of super macro computer today. I know that NVIDIA is going to make most of the chips. This is another thing. If you'll listen to, 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 to Jensen, he explains why his company is blowing everybody off the, off the map. There are other GPUs. They're made by Apple. They're made by Google. They're made by Amazon. And they're made by Microsoft. But they only work for their platform. They only speak their language. So if I'm not one of those four or five, and I want a GPU, I only got one place to buy it. And that's from NVIDIA. So if we are actually going to take this whole concept around the world, where are they going to buy their chips from? Now, um, um, Advanced Micro Devices has a similar chip, says it's a better chip. So now we got two people that can supply the rest of the world. Now, the other thing that I learned from Jan Lekum, who was at the conference, who is the head of um, IAI for Meta, is that they own or create the large language platform, which is called Llama 2. That is comparable to ChatGPT or uh, BARD. Why is that significant? Because Llama 2 is open source. ChatGPT basically belongs to OpenAI and Microsoft. BARD belongs to Google. So if I need to divide to, to, to architect a chip that isn't going to be used by Google, Amazon, Apple, or Microsoft, I have to use the open language. So again, Meta has recognized if we follow the lead of NVIDIA and we have the language that can be used by everybody as opposed to the language that is owned by BARD and, and OpenAI, we have a larger market. And Apple, or excuse me, Pineapple, is going to take our language to 80% of the world's population. So that's why we have to own Microsoft or um, Facebook Meta. All I'm trying to do is connect the dots. And that's what I want this, this channel to be, your window into the future. And I need your help. I'm doing all the research. I get some stuff from some people and say, you need to watch this. You need to do this. But that's how we can make, we, we are, I don't think anybody else is talking about this. We are at, we are at the door of the internet times 1 million. And this is, this is a number that Jensen uses. The computing power that's going to result from the next five years is a multiple of a million. Multiple of a million. We're, we're taking Moore's law and making it history. So that's where I want to take this as long as I can. Um, and, I, and I want you to all to be involved. So 
what I, if you did not get this, it's free. Uh, it's a link to it is on each one of the last four videos that I've made that you can go in and you, you'll be sent to constant contact. You'll just register yourself and I'll send it to you. Now, I'm building one right now for February. That's only going to be available to our premium and our platinum members. Because this, if you understand this, you're going to know what to buy. You're, you're going to look at super micro computer that went from 1,000 to 800 today. And you're going to say, I need some of that. Now's the time to buy in. And then next week, you're probably going to want to buy more when it goes down to $785. And then maybe it'll go down to $667. And you're going to want to buy it. And now you're going to be in the same predicament I am because I want to buy NVIDIA. I got stopped down on it. I know that there are, there are only four or five people who make GPU chips. And there's only one right now who has a chip that's available to anybody and everybody who wants to buy it. I also know that when they build that data center in Zimbabwe, it's going to have NVIDIA chips in it. It's going to have Supermicro's computer in it. It's going to have ASML's wafer machine uh, in the foundry when they build them. I know that because you can't get it anywhere else unless Canon produces what they say they're going to produce. Okay, this is... And, 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 and I apologize if I've gotten a little too uh, religious about it, <laughs> but it's going to change the world you live in, and it's going to happen fast. When you've got somebody who can get the ear of the Arab Emirates, like Sam Waltman did, Altman did. Uh, you're 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 going to get your ten trillion dollars. That's bigger than Apple, uh, Microsoft, Nvidia combined. And it's they aren't going to make anything. They're just going to build out the rest of the world, just like Mark did in India. You're probably wondering where I am. I'm in my house walking around. My wife's an artist. I come from an art background, um, which I think gives you, I think I actually have the best degree that you can get out of college, and that is a degree in graphic design and a minor in painting. And the reason I say that is because what you're taught is to take a blank canvas, a blank sheet of paper, a blank nothing, and create something out of thin air, which challenges you to think outside the box, outside of the scripted lines that many are taught while in school. Well, that's where we're at today. We're in an environment where you have to think outside the box. You have to think out a side of the script, the narrative on the news channels. You have to think outside and you have to take the perspective of the person on the other side of the table when it comes to a decision or a argument or an investment. Because what they see is probably much different than what you see and what you hope will be. Investing is not about hope. It is about perspective. 
It is about other perspectives. Why is there so much, so much focus on AI right now? Why is Sam Altman of ChatGPT trying to raise $10 trillion to create the next level of technology as we know it? It's partially maybe for better mankind, but those who are gonna invest 10 trillion collectively, it's about making money and it's about power. And when you see that and you, and you, and you absorb it and understand it, and most importantly, accept that's what this is all about, then you get on their side of the table and you start to see the world differently. SMCI and NVIDIA are prime examples of the power being taken from you. You bought in at a high price. Friday, it showed how fast it can go away. And I believe in the coming weeks and months, we will be, we'll be back to where we were in mid-January on many of these high beta positions. It is you, you have to take control of all of your life your future, you have to position yourself in the mindset that your hope and FOMO attitude is no longer, but rather the perspective of the powers in the world and what they're trying to achieve. You figure that out, you will become wealthy.